some light to start off with. community uh, around the, the country, uh, particularly the astronomy community, I think have a vested interest in this particular conversation that, uh, that Nithya is initiating. We are delighted that we've come to this point. I think it's the culmination of a long journey and hopefully the departure of a very exciting new journey into the future for astronomy. So uh, we are holding thumbs that this will be the beginning of something great and that you all look back on this event a few years down the line and see the rewards that you've uh, see the rewards of the efforts that have been going to be put in over the next couple of years. Uh, Nithya Chetty joined the NRF about three years ago uh, when he was put in charge of a very, very difficult uh, astronomy restoration project that all of you are well acutely aware of. And I think from my side, but certainly I'm sure from the community side as well, he has done an absolutely sterling job in terms of getting the conversations back on track and getting the momentum and the work back on track. I think that's critically important for us to make sure that uh, astronomy forges ahead. Um, when the uh, interviews were being held for the uh, Deputy CEO for, of Astronomy, uh, many of you around the table were one way, in one way or another involved in that process. but. Um, I think it became clear to us in that interview process that Nithya had won the confidence of the astronomy community and had won the support of the astronomy community in terms of the contribution he can make. And we were therefore delighted to offer him this position and we were equally delighted that he joined us uh, in a full-time capacity this time and not in a part-time capacity to forge ahead with the astronomy initiatives in this country. Of course, now that he's here full-time, it means that he's going to have to broaden his participation a little bit. It will be a slightly less strategic and oversight. He now has to dig his way into the operations and get his hands dirty and uh, try and figure out exactly what's happening in different parts of the different business units of astronomy. Um, but I'm sure he's completely competent uh, to do that and we all look forward to seeing the results of his efforts. Uh, pointed a very short while ago, we thought it would be important and useful for him to share with the astronomy community as a point of departure for a conversation his views on what should be happening and ought to be happening in astronomy. So, Nithya, I think without any further ado, over to you and we look forward to hearing what you have to say to us. Thank you very much indeed. <laughs> to just spend this evening with you to share with you my thoughts about my vision for astronomy in South Africa. And but firstly, let me thank the astronomy community and particularly its leadership for the support that you've shown me and the confidence that you've had in me over the past few years. It's not been an altogether easy journey, but I think we can look back and say we've done rather well. And that today we're poised for something very special in terms of astronomy. So thanks to, to astronomy and certainly thanks to NRF. Uh, within NRF, I've had uh, a good deal of support and particularly to Albert, uh, who uh, sadly is leaving NRF and will be heading over to the UKZN, as you know, and Albert, I would like to wish you all the very best in your future endeavors. I'm here to talk about um, my vision for astronomy in South Africa. I, this is being streamed live, live and I've got to be close to a microphone here, so I'm kind of restricted to a point. Do bear with me. Um, can we get my presentation up?
Good, thank you. So, uh, good. My vision for astronomy in South Africa, I'm sure that if a scientist uh, was asked to speak on uh, his or her vision for astronomy in South Africa, the individual will give a very scientific presentation. I, of course, am not here in the capacity of, of a scientist. I uh, now have had to invest in a few ties, so I'm here as a, as a manager. Uh, and uh, and so I'm here to really speak uh, from the point of view of, of being being a manager for astronomy within the, the National Research Foundation. So the um, basis of my presentation is really along the lines of what I would like to achieve in the mid to long term future in the astronomy terrain. But because there are many different players for astronomy in South Africa, and you will know that all too well, it's, uh, aside from uh, there's, there's no other discipline that, that has the attention of the government from the ministry in particular where very often you would have the ministry engaging very directly with, with senior astronomers in the community. You don't have that with other, other scientific disciplines. Astronomy really has a very special place in the South African scientific uh, environment. <coughs> there are many different players for astronomy, many different voices for astronomy in South Africa. The Director General and you have have many other individuals at the level of uh, deputy director generals within DST and other other officials as well that speak very eloquently about uh, astronomy and ditto within NRF we have the NRF board we have the executive we now have the astronomy advisory council and of course the broad astronomy community has many different strong voices and strong personalities too expressing particular views around astronomy so in this way I would say that <clears throat> my role the way in which I see it is really along the lines of what I would like to see achieved in the mid to long term future for astronomy in South Africa, noting very well that there are many different strands that need to be pulled together. And to a very large extent, I see my job as a, as a diplomatic one. That's certainly an extremely important aspect, uh, drawing the various different threads and different conversations together to forge a common coherent view about astronomy in South Africa. So my vision for astronomy is what I will be talking about, but furthermore, the whole concept of the sub-agency is still a new one. The sub-agency has, the term sub-agency is being used very freely today within the community, within government, but what precisely does that mean? How is that conceptualized? It's still a, a matter that we are formulating and under discussion, and hopefully today, through the course of conversations, and, and we will continue in the future through town meetings and so on, we will begin to firm up precisely what that means. But by and large, the way in which I see this is that it's uh, the sub-agency is still very much a part of the NRF. It is uh, Astronomy is managed as a separate program. It's referred to as Program 5. And it's a holding structure, in a sense, because Minister Pando, in a previous time, did advocate for the establishment of, of a separate agency. When Minister Hanekom came on board, he said no to that. The NRF board also had a view and said, well, let's set this astronomy up as a separate agency with a view to uh, be open and flexible, and as the environment changes, we will need to, to adjust accordingly. So that's the way in which I really see the sub-agency as a body that has the potential of eventually cleaving away from the NRF, but hopefully not over my time scale over the next five years. I think that will be an enormous effort to do, uh, and you will know too well that setting up the SANSA space agency was a huge effort that required a, a lot of downtime in terms of setting up systems and so on. I think we still need to stabilize the environment and set up governance systems uh, and set them up robustly well enough before we begin to, to think about a separate separate organization. <clears throat> so if there's one word that encapsulates my vision for astronomy in South Africa, it's the word excellence. Given the large scale investments that we are that government is making in the, in in this very special discipline, I think we can afford not not I think I know we can afford to being world class in particular niche areas, whether it be it be particular science areas or engineering disciplines or uh, computing uh, activities as well. I think uh, this this really is for me very central that we aim to be world class in the in the subset of, of activities that we choose to pursue within within the field of astronomy. And along the lines that I've indicated, the research that we do, the teaching, human capacity development, but also from the very, very relevant in the context of today's discussion from the point of view of my being the deputy CEO, I also want the management systems and the administrative <coughs> systems that we set up to being world class and supportive of the environment in which we are working. Because from this milieu of excellence, I believe that we can make 
the impact that is expected of us from this large scale investment in astronomy. It's the impact that I refer to as the, uh, the socio-economic and political impact. Along the lines that you know all too well, I would suggest that issues around transformation would be extremely important. So with human capacity development impacting on, on our educational systems in South Africa, we're dealing with extreme difficulties at, in terms of attracting bright young minds into the STEM uh, subjects. And astronomy is an important means, an important channel of, of, of achieving this. Afro-optimism uh, is a useful term to think about. Astronomy gives Africa a real good opportunity to feel proud of its accomplishments. And we have the geographic advantage of, of pursuing astronomy. And by developing this discipline completely, not just within South Africa, but broadly within Africa, we have the opportunity of retaining or re reclaiming Afro-optimism, which you could really think in terms of astro-optimism. Um, a whole range of other aspects as well. So the real point then is, is, is for us to pursue excellence in terms of astronomy in all of its facets. <clears throat> when I talk about excellence, I do really want to talk about quantifiable excellence. From the point of view of the sub-agency, I want to be looking at this fairly carefully. I want us to really understand South Africa's international standing in the field of astronomy, not just simply in terms of opinions, but also in terms of quantifiable data. So we want to be defining the niche areas and, and developing develop critical mass around those niche areas and for us to understand the productivity around those niche areas. <clears throat> I don't think it's necessarily going to be punitive. I would think of understanding the uh, productivity of, of particular activities within astronomy as a means of, of us understanding precisely how it is that we ought to be directing resources. So quite on the contrary, if I think, for example, that there's not sufficient activity in, in, in developing VLBI related science, and we understand and appreciate the fact that this is extremely important in the context of the ABN, then clearly this is not something that we simply cut because there's not sufficient activity. Quite on the contrary, the opposite has to happen, that we need to resource this appropriately. So we'll be looking at quality research publications clearly across the entire system. Government is currently um, commissioned CREST, which is a uh, institute at Stellenbosch, that, a, a center that looks at these various different metrics and assisting us to, uh, well, we had, did have a discussion on this at the last town meeting, so you will know that DST is already working on, on developing a system that will measure particular outputs for astronomy, and NRF will continue with uh, managing that process on an annual basis going forward. Once you're looking at the number of graduates in astronomy this year, NRF rated research is an extremely important uh, a parameter that I want to be uh, monitoring, particularly within our national facilities, I want to encourage many more scientists to gain the NRF rating within the national, national facilities. We want to have a more optimal use of our national facilities. Government through NRF is investing significantly in, in our infrastructure and really we do want our infrastructure to be utilized optimally. Obviously, uh, it goes without saying that our infrastructure also has to be current and relevant and keeping up with changing changing trends. So the, the corresponding point to consider is that we must continue to invest and modernize our, our infrastructure, developing astronomy very broadly within Africa and, and uh, within South Africa and Africa, rewarding excellence. And, uh, and here the long-term strategic plan has an important role to play that process is coming to a conclusion and hopefully by the end of this year we will have a final document. The document is out for final review currently uh, with the community and our, <coughs> the Astronomy Advisory Council has been set up. It's a new innovation for astronomy. It's been uh, in, a, in existence since the beginning of this year and it's working marvelously. I will say a little bit more about that later on but through the Astronomy Advisory Council the sub-agency will have optimal input uh, and advice and support in, t in the manner in which the uh, strategic plan will be, will be rolled out. Multi-wavelength astronomy is an extremely important driving force of astronomy in South Africa. The long-term strategic plan has the term multi-wavelength embedded in the title. We've got to think much more seriously about ways in which we will cooperate between the different wavelength regimes. To first approximation, multi-wavelength astronomy in South Africa really refers to optical and radio. But of course, we have a small and burgeoning gamma ray community, and particularly if the CTA does indeed come to Namibia, I think we need to support that particular activity as well, uh, but at an appropriate level. 
I'll say a little more about that a little later on as, as well. But there are other aspects of astronomy. There are groups of individuals working in X-ray astronomy and collaborating with international groupings, and we want to support that as well. But there is no decree from NRF that thou shalt do multivalent astronomy. A lot of folk really come to me and say, you know, we've jumped on the bandwagon, we've heard this term, and now everybody's going to do this. Obviously, multivalent astronomy is where it makes sense. It's, it's noteworthy that if the CTA does indeed come to Namibia, oh well, currently we have HES, which is the largest uh, a gamma ray telescope currently. In a region of radius of about 500 kilometers, we have the world's largest gamma ray telescope, the southern hemisphere largest optical telescope and soon to be the world's largest radio telescope. Surely we should not be working in silos. We've got to work at a, exploit that, that advantage in terms of the interest, infrastructure that we have, but also in terms of the personnel and the capacity that we build around these projects so that the, uh, the whole is greater than the sum of the individual parts. So um, that's what I've said there. Let's go on then. If we're looking at multivalent astronomy, what are the pillars for multivalent astronomy? So I've drawn this, this, this diagram here and, and these blotches here really represent in many ways the size of the community. The radio astronomy obviously is growing considerably. That could be the case in, in the future. If you're worried about the units that I'm using, I'm just calling these buckets the photons. <laughs> so that, that's what uh, astronomers are usually hustling for, lots and lots of photons. Uh, let's just pop radio optical and gamma for a moment because I will be saying a little bit about that along the way. But let's look at our other uh, endeavors in terms of multivalent astronomy. Uh, let's look at um, investments in, in international, other international telescopes. What, are the what is the possibility of South Africa investing in infrastructure outside the boundaries of South Africa? Well, of course, we're doing that in terms of the AVN. That is one project that we are building infrastructure outside our boundaries. With the gamma ray telescopes in, in Namibia, we have participated at, at a relatively low level, but in principle, we are contributing to the, uh, to the operational levies at, uh, at, uh, in terms of maintaining that particular telescope. And our commitments could well increase uh, should the CTA uh, come, come, uh, come to fruition in, in Namibia. But basically, I've drawn a rather little block here, meaning that I do not think that beyond those projects that I've mentioned, that we have a great likelihood of investing significantly in a telescope project outside outside our boundaries. Of course, that could change. We have strategic partnerships developing with the India uh, recently. We've come back from a visit to India, and we are talking about infrastructural build projects. It could be at the level of instrumentation, maybe not quite a telescope. We tend to be rather parochial this way. We quite want our international partners to come along, partner with us, so long as they build the, the telescopes in our, in our backyard. So I just wanted to mention that I do not see this as a huge growth area. International open time, though, there's an awful lot of open time. Yes, it turns out, does have open time. Many people do not know this, and I'm not so sure that we're making good use of international open time that does exist, including telescopes that belong to ESO. International archive, though, that, that's data that's already been been processed in some, it's somebody else's project, really, but data does does is, exist, and, and very often data is retreaded, and good science can be accrued from that, especially if you're use, utilizing uh, virtual observatory techniques, uh, ways in which you can can mine through data. So that's also an area that one one can can exploit for more more access to, to well for more photons, really, more buckets of photons. Computational and theoretical, those are areas that I would like to see developed. We have very strong computational groups that are beginning to develop here in South Africa, and that's an area that I think has, has, has a lot of potential to grow. Let's come on back to radio, optical, and gamma then. Uh, before I leave, I highlighted optical as an area that is, is has been a historical advantage, of course. Uh, optical astronomy has an almost 200-year history in, in South Africa. And whilst the radio uh, community has grown significantly, I'm fully aware that the optical uh, community, particularly SAO, is currently under enormous financial stress. And I would, uh, I would, uh, I would state that this is an area that is re receiving attention. I, I believe that whilst radio is growing at, at a phenomenal rate, we need to ensure that we do not undermine or, or relegate our optical activities because that has historically been our strength in terms of astronomy in South Africa. Good. So if those are the different pillars for multivalent astronomy, there needs to be some kind of glue that holds that together. Let's just try to explore this a little bit. I think if we focus on scientific problems before we 
begin to get hung up on instrumentation and telescope issues, then that is one way in which we can ensure that we build a truly, build a truly multi-urban community. Talk about the science and let the science drive the interactions and the collaborations and then go out looking for your, your uh, telescope uh, uh, facility that will enable you to, to achieve that, that goal. Obviously, it is the mandate of the sub-agency to forge multi urban astronomy. And I want to particularly start with consolidating HCD. I do not think that it helps much that we have a fragmented HCD program. There's SK, there's multi and that just kind of hobbled along. There's NASP and a whole range of other things. And through the long-term strategic plan, I expect that more funding will be available for, uh, for, for HCD, including African development that comes through very strongly in the, um, the long-term strategic plan. So consolidating all of that under one umbrella, having HCD for astronomy rather than HCD for optical separately from gamma, separately from, uh, from radio would be, would be uh, uh, desired, I, I, would, I would suggest. Consolidating the science engagement programs as well. It does not help that the various different national facilities are separately represented at the science festival each year. We need to have astronomy uh, presented, and, and that's much more efficient and much more realistic and cost effective too, I would, I would say. Uh, having a more unified uh, approach to our in international engagement. Uh, the virtual observatory I've already mentioned before, it's an activity that's only beginning to take root. It seems to be fairly, um, uh, how should I say this, there are different opinions on this, and I've talked a good deal about this matter amongst many different folks. There's certainly a, a, a group of individuals that feel very strongly that this is the way to go, and, and, and I, I support that idea, at least in principle. I can see the usefulness of this, and I would like to encourage that, it, that, 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 uh, that the virtual observatory activities grow in South Africa. There's certainly a number of influential folks that think differently about this, so I can only uh, uh, urge those who are strong proponents for this to work even harder to get your get the community fully behind you. Needless to say, theoretical and computational astrophysics is an important binding force for uh, multi wavelength astronomy. And uh, big data, that is, a, that is a matter that is currently being talked about a good deal. The, the term is used rather loosely. But large, basically, you're dealing with terabytes of data, petabytes, I suppose, and peter scale computing and peter flux and, and all of that. Uh, and, and the tools that you need and the, and the programs that you, and that you use and the whole concept of using data of, of such magnitudes are, uh, produce a different scale of, of challenges and of course the SK is consumed by that but so would the LSST and so would other, other projects as well. So just educating our students in, in the area of, of, of big data would be, would be very important. The picture is worth a thousand words so you can complete that sentence. Um, uh, spectroscopy is an extremely important uh, important uh, uh, means of, of, of uh, building up a multi wavelength uh, community because no matter what measurements you go out and uh, go out to do in whichever wavelength regime that you choose to, to work in, you will almost always need to have spectroscopic data for a variety of different reasons, whether these be velocity distribution fields or just the chemical uh, uh, composition of, of the gases that you're looking at. And, and that is that is one way I would like to see us having much more spectroscopic support for the radio astronomical endeavors that we are beginning with in South Africa. Let me come on over then to talk briefly about optical, radio, and gamma. <coughs> SAO sets a very high standard for research, as as we all know, and I'd like to see that replicated elsewhere in the system, especially in the way in which we set up our other national facilities, we, we will be looking very seriously in the near future towards setting up the South African Radio Astronomical Observatory and, uh, and certainly the standards that have been set right here I would like to see continued in terms of focused attention on, on ACD science engagement and so on. <clears throat> but insofar as SAO is concerned or optical astronomy is concerned, uh, the, the community has argued very strongly for a uh, filling up the so-called gap. We have the one meter class telescopes and we, we've been growing in and modernizing that way. And modernizing means that we replace some of our obsolete equipment. And of course we have a 10 meter class telescope. But that, uh, the salt is obviously being overloaded for the number of jobs that could uh, conceivably be uh, done using uh, a four meter class telescope. So this is an area that uh, the director of SAO, uh, Ted, Ted Williams, has, has argued for very strongly and we support the need for such a, a, a four-meter class telescope, particularly if it can be um, coupled with spectroscopic follow-up of, of radio and gamma. Um, SALT, uh, 
is in a very fine state currently after many years of, of challenges. Science is, uh, salt is in a highly productive state. Some of the smaller partners are having a difficulty meeting their, their, their financial obligations and we would like and we've begun a process of, of uh, planning for the uh, medium to long term strategic goals for the salt in terms of improvements and, and strategic uh, growth for, for the telescope. Uh, currently, the main challenges are securing the financial sustainability of the telescope, and um, and clearly we need we need a stronger commitment from all of our sole partners. Uh, we are currently uh, seriously looking for a new major uh, investor in salt, and government is actively engaging with its strategic partners in, in, in this regard. Uh, the idea of a a uh, salt-like telescope, perhaps a fully steerable telescope, is in the offing. It is something that we have talked about. Every great idea has got to start, a great project has got to start off with an idea, with a conversation. That's where we are currently. We certainly have the expertise right here in South Africa to set up such a, a telescope. And, uh, and, and perhaps with one or two partners, we could, well, uh, we, we could well achieve this. I don't think that South Africa alone could, it, could, could do this, but neither do I think a dozen odd pa uh, partners in a telescope of this sort would be, would be very productive. I think we've got to learn from our experiences with our current salt. So this is something that is on the cards, and, and I encourage the community to, to think further about how this could fit into the astronomy landscape in South Africa. Radio astronomy, what can I say? There's an awful lot that I can say, but let's just kind of crystallize this down to a few basic points. The, the goal that I have, and I'm talking about my vision, medium to long term, is that MIRCAP will be built and commissioned on schedule without hiccups. That is the plan, that's the hope. MIRCAP projects will be groundbreaking and transformational science, that's what we certainly expect. And MIRCAP will be maximally utilized for RSA science, for South African science. In this regard, the hope is that MIRCAP will be integrated into, into SKA at the very end rather than rather than at the very beginning. And that could give us something order six to perhaps eight years of quality science on, on Meerkat. Uh, in so far as SK is concerned, the hope is that, that, will, uh, that SK will be fully funded and built and commissioned. That's asking for an awful lot, but I'm just here to talk about the very high level issues related to the SK project. I do expect that we will have Nobel Prize winning uh, quality science done on South African soil and, and, and <coughs> very, very forward to to discoveries that are yet not imagined. The moment you develop a telescope of this magnitude that moves us into a completely new regime in so far as discoveries are concerned, you're bound to find uh, totally unexpected results. Uh, very keen to understand what the international SKA model is going to be. That is still under discussion. That's a discussion that takes place at the SKA International Board. But that will have ramifications in so far as the way in which we we roll out our radio astronomical governance systems, i.e. the South African Radio Astronomical Observatory right here in, in South Africa. The SK project, I should mention, is continues to be driven strategically by the DST. It, it's really a very complex structure. The SK is technically speaking and legally speaking a, a, a project of the NRF. All appointments are made by NRF, reporting and so on, and budgets are approved by NRF, but really DST has a very strong hand in driving this because of the international dimensions. So there is a very complex matrix structure that is in place, but as SK uh, matures into a radio astronomical observatory, so too will the, will the, will the pendulum swing and, and NRF will get more, more involved in SK. But, but currently there's certainly a subset of aspects related to the SK project that the sub-agency will have a very strong hand in uh, AC, consolidated ACD, for example, just simply driving radio astronomy as a scientific endeavor in South Africa. That is, that is certainly the, the ambit of all, all matter that, that concerns the, uh, the NRF sub-agency in astronomy. I've already touched on the South African, astronomy, uh, South African Radio Astronomy Observatory. Heart REO is an important part of this discussion. The moment we talk about a single South African radio astronomical observatory, you've got to keep in mind that we already have a radio astronomical observatory west of Pretoria, and so very naturally the, uh, the, the merge of these two entities come into play, and that has to be managed extremely carefully and will be a matter that we will be, uh, we will be considering over, over the coming, coming years. Uh, in so far as heart is concerned, uh, in my view, it's extremely important for us to continue to support the activities there, even though heart-related science really is, is completely overshadowed by SKA-related science. But keep in mind that heart is 
a, an observatory that is located in the central part of South Africa, and as we try to strengthen astronomy in the north, this provides a very ideal opportunity for training, for getting connected with our universities in the north, and also connecting up with with our African SKA partner countries, at least for, for, for now, insofar as the ABN project is concerned. At this time, I should recognize Michael Gaylard, who sadly is, cannot be with us here today, but remember the significant role that he has played in terms of championing particularly the ABN project, um, and I, I think we owe to him in particular to see this through to completion. The Space Geology Program is, is intrinsically a part of heart RAO, but there are significant overlaps with, with Sansa Science, and the way in which I hope to manage that, that conversation is to, to encourage very strong cooperation between, between, the, two, uh, between the two agencies at Sansa and NRF. There's always going to be uh, a gray area between space science and astronomy. It does not help for, for us to, to demarcate this very strongly, and, and I would be looking at a mem memorandum of understanding. Uh, currently, we're talking about the Radio Astron project. We're talking about the Russian uh, satellite laser ranging system. Those are aspects that touch on both SANSA-related work as well as, as HART. And we have the expertise at HART RAO, and, and, and I believe that we've got to find a way in which this can be achieved uh, optimally and effectively and cost-effectively especially, and in a way that really promotes science. And, and I'll be looking at ways in which we can forge strong ties between SANSA and, uh, and, and, and astronomy in um, uh, in particular, particularly in the context of of art. CAT7 has been talked a good deal about recently. I, my view is that there's been an awful lot of money that's been spent on CAT7, 150 million rand, rand at least, and uh, um, clearly it is going to cost money to continue to run uh, CAT7 into the future, but my recommendation is that we continue to use this at the very least for training. Uh, it was always conceived of as a, a, an engineering test bed and it will continue to be used uh, as such, but uh, I certainly encourage the community to use CAT7 as best as you can for, for science, particularly for Mars and uh, concepts. Uh, the general idea here is then for, for the astronomy reserve to become a net attractor for, for astronomy, for radio astronomy up in the northern part of the, of, of the northern Cape. Uh, but keep in mind that they're competing projects. Here he has mentioned, hopefully it could come to South Africa. There are other, other projects that people are considering. The region is very optimal for radio astronomy, but at the same time we do have other competing projects that we've got to keep in mind, and South Africa cannot play everywhere. We've got to uh, use our limited resources rather smartly, and, uh, and so one, one has to make these decisions very, very carefully especially if the South African money involved in this. Of course, if the foreign partners that are wanting to build telescopes in South Africa and make good, good use of our pristine conditions, uh, I don't think they're freely able to do that, but it's, we certainly are willing to, to, to discuss those issues. There invariably would be resource implications, but if there's a net gain for South Africa, then, then of course we, we want to pursue that very, very actively. For all of radio astronomy, then, there are many different facets, as you can see, many different aspects to this, and, and it's, a, it's, a, it's a terrain that is, um, that is in transition for, for various reasons that, that you know all too well. There's a, there's a need for a senior radio astronomy uh, person to come on board, an astronomy science uh, director or chief scientist, the way in which we refer to, to the individual, and, and the SK office is in the process of appointing a radio chief scientist, uh, and, and hopefully one, once that individual is in place, <coughs> I think we'll have a good basis of drawing the various different radio astronomy strands together in South Africa. Gamma ray astronomy is always only going to be a relatively small endeavor in South Africa. Of course, we hope that the CTA will come to, uh, to Namibia, and it's primarily the northern universities that, are, that are, are supported through this program, but of course we encourage very strong collaboration between the other other uh, disciplines of astronomy with, with the gamma ray community and if you have the funding then please participate formally within this program but currently the funding is rather limited it's just a border a million and a half rands for, for communities that involves about four universities but we would like to see this uh, as, as a intervention that we support uh, primarily to strengthen astronomy in the north but of course to, to uh, forge multi collaboration uh, between radio and, and optical as well theoretical and computational. I, I myself am a theoretical and computational uh, physicist, but I work on the directly opposite lens scale, of course, at the nanometer lens scale, and you guys are at the directly opposite uh, side, of, side of that. 
mind-boggling at times. Um, but but let's, let's be, be clear here that this is a very cheap way of getting people involved, certainly in the context of Africa, SK partner countries, and non-SK partner countries uh, having access to computing facilities and having access to data through the network and uh, utilizing uh, high-performance computing centers uh, in South Africa or located in, in Africa is, is certainly a way to go. And, and really, we are in the, in the uh, era today of, of service observing. So even though we have SK right on our doorstep, many of our scientists will be interacting or utilizing SK purely in the service mode in terms of submitting proposals and getting data and mining through that data. So in principle, that's not really matter where you said you could be in Antarctica. And, and, and really, this is an area that I think I would like to try to see develop fairly strongly. Uh, engineering technical disciplines, uh, I think David Davidson knows all too well that I support this very strongly. I want to see our engineering faculties uh, take, uh, make, make good use of this wonderful opportunity that astronomy presents itself, good, make good use of the technical uh, workshops that we have invested in in places like SAO, Hot REO has very good technical capabilities as well. And for us to develop uh, technicians all the way through to fully fledged engineers, there's a whole wide range of, of skills that we can be developing. This could, this should be seen as a means of revitalizing our technical training program in South Africa. So let's talk briefly then about human capacity development because this is what really drives a good deal of investments in, in, in astronomy. I mean, this, clearly everybody wants quality science, but in the end, you know the South African story. And that it has everything to do with lack of, of properly trained scientists, not just for astronomy, not just for academia, but broadly for South Africa, for, for, uh, for uh, activities far removed from the university environment. Uh, but we have this, this, this issue. We have this very well-known problem of having fully prepared uh, students coming in from our high school system. And that's not about to change. Uh, that's, that's here to stay for a long time. We can complain a great deal, uh, and, and it just ain't going to change the reality. The reality is that the input to this problem is, is, is rather poor. The output is what we all desire, and that is something that is quite, uh, uh, quite uh, noble. We want our students to have a very broad range of skills that will be transferable to a wide range of different activities, as I've said in the banking sector, in engineering, in commerce, in industry, and so on, software development would be one such aspect. We want our students to have good entrepreneurial skills, be innovative in their thinking, be critical in the way in which they approach their work. But of course, there's a huge bridge in between that has to be, has to be uh, connected, a gap rather that has to be bridged. And currently, we have our university education and training system that is struggling, really. If you go to a typical undergraduate program at a South African university, to a very large extent, they're dealing with remedial work. We're dealing with students that are not properly prepared to cope with university education. But where does astronomy come in this? Well, astronomy, we all believe, because you've said this to me, and I've, it's, I've, I've come around to appreciate the fact that astronomy is unique in the way in which it the discipline has a means of exciting young children, their parents included, to the wonders of science. It does not take much to to excite young kids into the wonders of science. And, and, and it's in this respect that astronomy has an extremely important role to play. You've sold this very hard. The, 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 the government people have bought into this, uh, investing in astronomy in a very significant way. And of course, so the delivery is extremely important. Astronomy has a unique way in which you are able to motivate young, young children into science, into STM, to inspire such such uh, ch children. But but of course, these these kids need to be uh, need to work in a supportive environment. You need to instill hard work and discipline in, in in these students. So I don't think that astronomy is necessarily the the only solution. There are many other disciplines that can also achieve this. But you have an extremely important role to play. The key point I believe is that amongst the fully fully prepared students that are emerging from our high school, that a good number of these students have the potential. I believe that very fervently as many of these students have not had the requisite training and support. They've simply probably not had uh, good science teachers or well-qualified or qualified science teachers. Uh, you, you've gotten kids that have graduated through school and have eked out a, a poor symbol in, in math or science only because they've 
they've labored so so hard at, at, at doing so with, with very little support from within the school. So it's those students that I think are plentiful in number, if you get them early enough through uh, a, a concerted science engagement program that you are, I believe, able to, to help us, help South Africa, to help Africa bridge this important gap. The NAS program is an important uh, intervention that, that we have set up, uh, has been in existence for the past uh, 10 years or so, a little more than that now, and this is certainly one way in which we hope to develop uh, human capacity in, in South Africa. The idea is for us to expand NAS to two additional nodes, that, that uh, proposal come from the community to UKZN and to, to Northwest University. And my hope is that we will broaden this to include the engineering and technical disciplines with the Sol Park University being established in Potchef in, uh, in Kimberley and this being the university in the Northern Cape. It makes sense that we have an astronomical offering at, uh, at this new university and, and certainly there have been initial conversations along the lines of setting up a NASP node in terms of engineering, the NASP concept anyway, in terms of engineering and technical disciplines. And as some of your NASP graduates move over back to their home countries in places like Zambia, Kenya and so on, there's every likelihood that we could set up a NASP node in a, in a foreign African country. So that's, that's, the, that's the idea that I hope that we can work towards. So the idea then is for us to to establish a well enough uh, reputation for our graduates in astronomy that they are versatile. Here you have a, an astronomer, you can tell because he has a little ponytail. <laughs> <laughs> and, and he's very clever. You see, he's turned his telescope into uh, all, all of his astronomical uh, experience and education to look at a nuclear physics problem. And the reputation that I would like to achieve is that astronomers have the versatility to go on to other, other branches of, of, uh, of endeavor, shall we say. Um, human capacity development, intrinsic part of this is transformation, clearly. This is an extremely important matter and, and there's a huge, huge responsibility on astronomy to help us deliver on the transformational goals for, for South Africa. You know this is the great South African story, I need not have to tell you about this. Uh, so what is it that we're looking at? We're looking at people development particularly and, and providing the support to enable our students to succeed, not just simply having an open process like the way we often have abroad. In Germany in particular, you know, if you do not make the grade, you're shown the door very quickly. In South Africa, I think it gives our scientific academic endeavors much more meaning by, by uh, focusing on, on on creating an, a more nurturing environment for, for our students. There's, there's a lot more satisfaction, I think, that comes about by working in an environment where you are really working. distracted a little, sorry, here. Uh, by, by creating, creating an environment where, where, we, create, uh, we, where we support the development of, of, of people. Within the context, con, uh, context of, our, of our astronomical facilities, I would like us to think much more in terms of succession planning, headhunting, certain recruitment strategies within the national facilities. I hope that we can begin to appoint more associate directors, for example, so that more individuals in the context of transformation or just simply creating opportunities for, for individuals' growth uh, and, and, and hence creating a better, better opportunities for such individuals to, to move into leadership uh, positions. In terms of African development, clearly we have a huge obligation in terms of development way beyond our, our borders. The SK project is an African project, not just a South African project. Of course, with, with optical astronomy too, we have uh, endeavors that reach out into uh, far, far countries into, into Africa, and we want to ensure that, that, that astronomy plays its rightful role in terms of African development. The OED, of course, uh, has, has as, as its mandate, the development of astronomy broadly around the world, but, but clearly with, with the OED being located in South Africa and with significant South African funding going into, the, into this office, I do expect that there will be, and, and it's already being delivered, I see Kevin here working tirelessly to help the, the development of this discipline in Africa. And so far as the SK project is concerned, the way in which I see this is that there's very good government to government interactions. Of course, you know that that is happening. It has to happen. The government ministers do meet on an annual basis and they toast and they do all sorts of nice things whenever they get together. And when they head back to their respective countries, very often very little happens. In order for 
these discussions to take firmer root into it in, in our various different African partner countries, there's got to develop a stronger scientific base in these countries. Uh, currently, there's good technical to technical cooperation between South Africa the Escape Project and uh, uh, and various different technical teams. It's not happening very optimally, but in, in countries like Ghana, for sure, that is that is beginning to take root in other places as well. But uh, but the academic the academic interaction is not happening well enough, and I would like us to think more more seriously about how it is that we can achieve this. Certainly, an expanded NASP system will help. The uh, NASP known in Africa would, uh, would assist this process greatly, and, and the interim training for an African student here in South Africa will, will be very very beneficial to this effort. The JEDI programs are already showing a, a, a lot of promise. I would like to see the development of a twinning program between particular institutions in our African partner countries and and institutions in South Africa. So on an institution to institution basis, very recently during a ministerial visit to Namibia, our minister proposed publicly that uh, to, the, to the minister in Namibia that it would be very useful to explore the possibility of a joint chair that is funded um, jointly by both Namibia and South Africa. And so between UNAM and Northwest University, we're looking at the possibility of setting this up. <coughs> Our international engagement, clearly astronomy is a very international endeavor, and that is a given. But South Africa cannot do business with every country that wants to take up the wonderful opportunities that are emerging here in South Africa. Of course, through normal binational agreements, we have agreements with more than 40 countries, Albert. We, uh, th those possibilities do exist, but our approach is to look at a few countries in a very targeted way for our astronomical cooperation, and currently we've identified the United States, the United Kingdom, Holland, India, and China. I'm pretty sure that you will have questions about that. Uh, Germany and, and Australia have already been highlighted as countries of extreme importance, but of course it's always going to be resource limited. And so we're looking at astronomical cooperation with these countries, but more specifically within the realm of astronomy, we want to look at strategic areas that will benefit uh, South, Af South Africa, well, of mutual benefit really, ultimately, and that's an area that we will be, will be exploring very, very closely. Uh, clearly the IAU has an important role in this. Uh, let me kind of move on. I think I'm very quickly going to be running out of time. Robert, you need to give me another 10 minutes, please. Uh, the, the foregoing of my presentation was what is it that I would like to see achieved in terms of the in terms of the sub uh, in terms of the sub agency. But let me just talk with you very briefly about the way in which I see the sub agency unfolding. Basically, the terms we used a good deal. And what does it refer to? Essentially, it's the office of the deputy CEO and, and combined with the Astronomy Advisory Council, keeping in mind that the council is, is there in an advisory capacity, but extremely important. There's an awful lot of advice that, uh, that the deputy CEO will need, and, and the council provides a bridge between this, the, 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 the deputy CEO and, and the community. So I encourage very strongly that you get connected up with your council members and you have conversations with individuals. Next slide I have a list of those, those individuals. And of course the responsibility in a concerted management system uh, is, is for us uh, is, is, the, is the astronomy and national facility together with the project that was the escape project and I suppose the SA, uh, South African Gamma Ray program will be included in, in that. The Astronomy Advisory Council, you will know the names, it's quite a, quite a large number of individuals, very senior people and thank you all for the nominations that NRF received. The NRF uh, CEO, in conjunction with the NRF uh, board, had made the decision on these individuals to help lead the, the, the council. The, the names in black are the, the proper council members, and the ones in red are the so-called excess official members. So we, at, at the bottom, sit in and take advice from the ones at the top. And it's worked fairly, fairly well so far. Uh, we've had a couple of, couple of meetings, and of course I'm very grateful to have uh, Professor Rene Kran Kordeveg as, as the chair, and, and she's been extremely helpful and very supportive of, the, of our efforts thus, thus far. The uh, office currently is just the deputy CEO with one peer, and Theo is sitting at the back. Those of you uh, who have not met with Theo as yet, um, she's certainly been interacting a good deal with you. So it's Theo and myself, and about 60% of units. So that is what. Uh, I'm not sure which half of you we ought to be cutting up. Um, but basically, we top 10 at the moment, and it's, it's the way in which I want to see this for, for the uh, 
conceivable future anyway. I would like for us to grow from here, but it, at the very least for, under, for us to understand very clearly what our requirements are before we begin to stop rubbish. There's also the skeleton stop, and I want to maximally utilize our current systems within RETA. That's the Research Innovation Support Advancement Section Grant Making as, uh, arm of the, of the NRF. Want for us to interface with RETA very optimally before we begin to, to think about our other individuals that we might well need within, within the, uh, the sub-agency. What is RESA? Well, we have a deputy CEO that heads up RESA. Hope you appreciate the diagram of drawing. It took a long while to put this together. And uh, we have eight directorates. And I'm not going to go through all of those international relations and corporation uh, grant management and support, uh, support administration. That's important for the grants that you, you manage human and infrastructure capacity development. That would be important with astronomy, institutional engagement and partnership development that's engaging with, with our various different universities, CITLA, and so on. So we have these eight directorates. Each of these is headed up by an executive director, so a very senior individual with a, a, a group of directors beneath that, uh, that individual and, and an entire team of, of officials that, that support and service that particular director. So the, the capacity does exist, many of you complain about the quality of the service, and we will talk about that in a moment. But, uh, but clearly, we, we do have the systems in place, and, and to, to a very large extent, I want to find a way to ensure that, that RISA supports the, the efforts of astronomy in, in an optimal, optimal way. So it is RISA that interfaces with the university research community, as you know all too well. And so does RISA, and it's the, uh, the, the RISA that interfaces with the research community that's embedded within our national facility. And it's this interface here that is, is a matter of enormous uh, discussion, of course, and I do travel the country very extensively, and I hear a lot of complaints about the quality of the service that, 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 that's provided for, for astronomy and broadly for other disciplines as well. And certainly it's an area that, I, that we need to ensure works uh, more, more optimally, and, and I believe the NRF is committed to ensuring that, that, that this happens. The deputy CEO sits outside this, this uh, this line management system, but in many ways we are working within a matrix structure. So within NRF, uh, we have established very firmly a means by which we have teams of individuals from various different directorates that, that uh, work within the so-called project um, concept, and, 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 in, and that already requires that people talk, uh, wave, and, and discuss, and, and, and work a across these various different, different uh, line management systems. And, and that is what I want to enhance very strongly within, within the sub-agency, this matrix model. So the two lines of funding that will be associated with astronomy from long-term strategic plan, there will be targeted astronomical uh, funding programs that will be directed through the sub-agency, but once again, I do not have the capacity and do not intend to establish that capacity in the short term. I will want to utilize research services optimally for that, so that's one stream that's got to keep in mind. But there's also another stream, it's the normal open calls that we have that are currently embedded within RISA, for which astronomy is already and historically has always been a part of. For a while, I'm, I think I'm just going to pass that and, 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 and work with the various different directors to ensure that astronomy is, is appropriately supported. But in the longer term, the Astronomy Advisory Council has specifically asked that those aspects of astronomy that sit within bursaries and uh, research chairs and a whole range of other, other funding instruments should also be guided by the, by the sub-agency. But that, that's a longer term matter. I, I, I think I'm going to take this in, in five slides. But an extremely important aspect in this would be the, the establishment of the so-called standing astronomy grants panel. It comes through very strongly from the uh, long-term strategic plan, so this is a matter that the community does want. I've had many conversations with key individuals. Astronomy Advisory Council supports us very strongly, and this concept is beginning to take root within NRF, and I hope that once we achieve this, we will be able to establish a very efficient way of managing a whole range of different astronomy applications that come through NRF through either one of these two channels, targeted or the open. And, and of course, it's going to help a great deal that, the, that, that I establish a good working relationship with the standing panel, that there's institutional memory established over a period of time, and we can then begin to develop and, and drive astronomy strategically through, these, through the work of the, of the standing grant panel. 
so this is a match that's, that's also been, been uh, somewhat uh, contentious, I suppose, but I thought I should be open about it. Let's talk about this. The, the aspect of culture and ethos. There is a, a clash that has, has developed. And, and over the time, over a period of time, I, find, I found myself being very much at the cusp of this, of this uh, culture clash uh, as group executive of astronomy, and I, and I, and I would dare say that as, as deputy CEO, I will continue to have to manage this conversation between, between the left side and the right side. So what, what is the essence of this? And let's try to see how is it that we can develop a better understanding around, around what, what is essentially seen to be a clash of cultures. On the one side, what, what I constantly hear from the community is that the increasing corporatization of the NRF, perceptions of over-regulation, perceptions of poor service and unnecessary bureaucracy. That's what we, what we hear. And this, the, the academic community, the astronomy community, to a very large extent, wants an environment that is supported for, of science, of research and human capacity development. Anything that's got nothing to do with the support of, of those endeavors the community really wants to have very little to do with that. And so th this creates for a tension that, that has to be managed extremely carefully. And, and, and at the very least, I think one needs to understand the, the arguments on both, on both sides. But what's extremely important now that I've joined the NRF and come to appreciate the fact that there are, there are a great number of different legislative directives from Treasury, from DST, from, from Parliament, including policies and procedures within NRF that simply have to be adhered, uh, adhered to for, for a variety of reasons. South Africa is certainly a, a highly corrupt country. We learned the other day that is it, it is this, only the 70th least corrupt country, around the 70th least corrupt country in the world, with New Zealand being, being the least corrupt country and Scandinavia, Scandinavian countries following soon after this. We have serious problems in South African society, and you know that all too well. The range of aspects that we, we need to abide by uh, and, and there's, there's no compromise on that. We, there are the reports that need to be done, and, and all I can promise is that I turn that into a meaningful exercise, and that um, and that it serves astronomy in, in, in a way that that, uh, that it can best do. I would, I'm certainly committed to ensuring that we have uh, improved service, particularly from the research directorate insofar as astronomy is concerned. But this is a matter that affects the uh, entire scientific community in South Africa. Certainly committed to that, but I, I expect. And I, and I ask then for, for a, a greater understanding of the requirements, particularly the legislative requirements that are, that are needed on, on the part of government. We are dealing with massive sums of money. The budget for astronomy is in excess of a billion rands a year. You do not want to be on the third page of the, of the Sunday Times. The moment that happens, you end up, we leave the first page to the president, I think. <laughs> uh, so how is it that we're going to, going to change? Um, how is it that we're going to change this culture an idea that I've, I've been promoting very strongly, certainly within NRF, is that we circulate people. I would like to see that's what the circle is meant to, meant to suggest, that we, we have more individuals from the research environment coming into the NRF system and, and also going on back to the NRF system. I think the idea of a, of a professional science manager at the highest level, or even within a university environment, is really an anathema to, to the, the, the entire scientific research enterprise. So I would like to see more individuals who have the experience in the research environment going into a management position and then cycling on back again and taking that experience back into the research community. The way in which I'm seeing the sub-agency develop then are along the following three lines. I see the sub-agency providing strategic management. So I want to use the word strategic. Strategic interventions, whether it's in, uh, management over the, the, the national facilities or various different projects or in so far as the uh, interface with research concerned. So the term strategic would be, would be very important here. And then just simply leave the, the, the real hard management work to the various different executive directors. I do not want to be in a position to be micromanaging our various different executive directors. We certainly pay our na uh, directors of our national facilities rather handsomely, and I don't think that they want me to micromanage them. So I would say that the management by our research executive directors and, and national facility directors uh, is, is, uh, is, is an entirely different uh, set of responsibilities, and of course the administration, is, is uh, at least in the context of visa, will be done by, by, by various different, different officials. So it's a strategic input that I see uh, the deputy CEO at the sub-agency uh, playing an extremely important role 
actually to fault uh, the uh, rolling out of the various uh, programs to concern. Functions, I, I lost two or three slides right now. Um, in, in the end, I would say that it's providing strategic leadership, that's what I expect uh, to be doing, supporting the SKA project, uh, knowing full well that the SKA project derives its strategic direction from, from, the, from the government, uh, quality human capacity development, transformation, strengthening astronomy in the north, all very much a part of, of the mandate of the South Agency, developing astronomy more broadly within, within Africa, engineering and technical training, so that's extremely